This is my Lego city called 24ville, and today its minifigures are traveling through time, trying to fix its past so its future doesn't look like this. This is Garrett, who's infiltrated this team of astronauts, including Denny, Benny, a bunch of others, Cosmo, and Cosmo. Wait. Their last mission had been a huge success, but an even bigger threat just emerged. Oh, it's just a weird horse creature thing. I am Rocky, destroyer of worlds. Oh no, it, it crushed the temporal jade in its fist, releasing its power into an otherworldly blast that created all kinds of natural disasters throughout the timeline. We have to stop this thing. The astronauts readied their spaceships for another epic battle montage against it, except meteors from the blast started to rain down and destroyed them. Oh no, this is all my fault. Cosmo decided to travel back in time and get Garrett's help to stop himself from- Yeah, I already tried that. It didn't work. You're so stubborn. So that's the reason there's two Cosmos. Sorry, time travel is confusing. But Garrett didn't have time to understand it. Rocky was quickly approaching. One of the Cosmos, I don't know which one, blasted it with his gun called the Origin Ray. It's designed to send any object back to its origin point on the timeline, wherever that may be. Rocky appeared in the medieval era, right next to the time-bending Morgan Treeman. Yeah, I'm a father now. He donned the persona of Ebenezer the Wizard and began to hone his newfound time powers by helping Scarlet and Garrett with their orc problem. Then he went into hiding, watching and waiting for thousands of years until... <laughs> what? Again? Everyone thought Cosmo had taken care of Rocky, but he was back. He stole the Origin Ray, hijacked one of their time machines, and was gone. We have to go after him. But where did he go? And when did he go? Denny and Benny came with them to find out, leaving the rest of the crew to clean up this mess. Steve was going about his normal day, feeding the koala family after their smash hit music video, when the time machine suddenly appeared. Follow us! Garrett explained what on earth was happening on the train ride over to the museum, where they found Harriet trying to get her new pet dinosaur under control. We need to see your history exhibits to find out which era Rocky disturbed. Wait, who's Rocky? They ignored her, trying to see if any of the 100 artifacts revealed anything, but nothing looked out of the ordinary. Except that, Fluffy disappeared right in front of them, which could only mean one thing. Rocky had traveled back to dinosaur times, where he made a beeline to Diego's house and prepared to fire the origin ray. But across the river, Garrett and Cosmo Number 1 arrived, completely surrounded by dinosaurs. I have an idea. They rode the raptors as fast as they could, but they were too late to stop Diego's stone hut from vanishing into thin air. And just like that, Rocky was gone, right as Garrett and Cosmo got there. Diego! The two old friends were reunited, but there wasn't time for pleasantries. We need your help. The confused caveman had no idea what was going on, but seemed willing to come with them. So the three of them hurried out of there before Terry the Terror could get them. Remember, the P is silent. Back in the present, Diego's house just appeared out of nowhere. Harriet was having a field day studying this piece of prehistoric history. You could say she really digs fossils. Okay, that space dad joke wasn't that bad. Something weird is going on. But the next stop on Rocky's tirade was back in the medieval era he had trained in. The poor village was still occupied by General Grog's orc army, forcing the villagers to remain up in the flying castle. But with most of the orcs away from their camp, Rocky was able to quickly zap it away without being noticed. Garrett had a hunch this was his next target, but the squad had once again arrived a bit too late to stop it. They definitely needed to get away from the orcs, so Diego dealt with them while Garrett called Violet over to pick them up. After learning what was going on, Scarlet ordered her archers to open fire at Rocky, but at this point it was futile. Luckily, Wendell was there to rescue everyone, but now they had nowhere to hide from the army of orcs. Oh, actually, Diego put them in their place. I don't think they'll be a concern anymore, so Scarlet agreed to come with and help. And I guess Grog wants to come with too? Eh, why not? Everyone crammed into the time machine and were off to the next era. Good luck, my friends. The 24-ville citizens had all started to gather around this mysterious new structure. Even Bella canceled the soccer Yahtzee hybrid game she was coaching to check it out. But the chaos was only beginning. The orcs camp had appeared next to the museum, and all of a sudden there was a giant castle hovering ominously above them as well. They all split up to investigate, with Harriet leading the space guys over to the camp, where baby Betty really liked the rope bridge, and Steve and Bella climbed the zoo skyscraper to jump on into the castle. 
the crowded time machine arrived back at the founding of 24ville, with no sign of Rocky in sight. Looks like we beat him here. Turns out the new mayor, Claude, had been working tirelessly to improve the city by getting rid of the factory's pollution and cleaning up the neighborhoods, planting flowers everywhere. He even turned the guillotine into a playground for the kids. But there was no time for playing. This was their one opportunity to stop Rocky from removing this era's houses before he got the chance. And it looks like Jacques... <clears throat> knew how to help. His boss, Fred, had given him full ownership of the 24ville Gazette after finding his cat, and he used the printing press to send out letters rallying his old friends from the revolution. They even bailed Napoleon from prison to offer his genius expertise. Guns. After a quick meal of ratatouille and a battle plan inside, it was time to line up the troops, ready and waiting for Rocky to make his entrance. Fire! Their muskets were useless against his time-bending powers, so Grog tried firing the cannons, which completely missed Rocky and hit one of the Eiffel Tower's support beams instead. That can't be good. The monument toppled over onto the prison, freeing Marie just in time for her to watch her prized mansion disappear, and Jacques' newspaper office. In all the chaos, Rocky had sneaked past all their defenses, and was on the way back to his time machine with only these five minifigures, or six, no seven, in his way. But even with all of them working together, he was just too powerful, leaving them all in the dust. Marie demanded they follow him to get her mansion back. So with a now very crowded time machine, the group returned to the present. Even more houses started materializing around the city, and no one had any idea what was going on or why until the whole gang arrived just in time to explain. They grabbed a pizza at the farmer's market to share. You know, we could get some veggies to go with. No one's gonna buy your carrots, bro. Oh, man. Everyone put their heads together to try and unravel what on earth was going on. Rocky hadn't hurt anyone or anything. All he was doing was zapping one or two houses in each era and sending them all back here. But why? The origin ray he was using was supposed to send things back to their origin on the timeline. But that would mean... You all belong here! Suddenly, the final two houses in Rocky's collection spree appeared. The Spaceship Factory and Denny's Brown Spaceship. Now I have you all! All but one! <laughs> Rocky became cocooned within a ball of temporal energy, shooting out bolts of lightning all over the place as he prepared for what comes next. Some of the lightning bolts hit the houses in the back, swapping their places to look more aesthetically pleasing. And another knocked off Cosmo's helmet, revealing his true identity. For once, I, I don't believe anyone has guessed this, but he was actually Baby Benny, all grown up. He had watched his dad get viciously eaten by an alien before retreating with the rest of the crew. And as he grew up, he became obsessed with finding a way to bring him back. He disguised himself and snuck into a time facility to steal one of their machines, taking himself back to finally see his father again. But Denny was dead set on battling that alien, and nothing Cosmo did could stop him, despite trying over and over and over. He concluded the only way he could defeat this foe was with the fabled Temporal Jade. So he pinpointed the easiest point in history it could be stolen, in a city called 24ville, right before it was unveiled at Harriet's Museum. He stopped at Garrett's Carrot Stand to refuel on carrot juice, and while it didn't go exactly to plan, he figured out a way to recoup his losses. The whole board game competition he had them do was just for fun, to be honest. It reminded him of all the good times he had playing games with his dad. But when he stole the jade and used it to finally save save him, he unknowingly awakened an ancient beast. A rocking horse, made from the wood of a doghouse, Oof. made from this the fallen the tree of ideology. ancients. Combining both sources of temporal energy created this terrifying anomaly, bent on rewriting history. You eleven mortals share a powerful bond, and when joined together, unleash a force that will destroy your city and start the cycle anew. What? It's happened before, and it will happen again, except this time, you thought you could scatter yourselves all across time and erase the final twelfth from history. Not if I have anything to say about it. Rocky's temporal energy manifested dozens of rocking horse girls, and as the army of them grew, Rocky also grew 100 times bigger, towering over them. <laughs> Your time has come! Die, puny beings! The two time machines collided, careening Garrett and Cosmo off to somewhere familiar. Where are we? 
They had somehow arrived in my last LEGO City, 23ville, mere moments before the mech squad planned to attack the elf on the shelf. They're actually there in that video if you look close enough, but to make matters worse, their time machine had completely run out of fuel at the worst possible time. Attack! We gotta go find some carrots! Cosmo took some from the Reindeer Games prize barrel, and Garrett tracked down a MASSIVE carrot from who knows where. They were able to get out of there just in time. Everyone, get on the board! But when they returned, the swaths of Rocking Horse Girls had captured everyone up in the Flying Castle. What do we do? We're completely outnumbered. I know exactly who can help us. So they went back in time again for Garrett to rally his ancestors and anyone else he could from the past, present, and future, forming a ragtag team to save this city one last time. And with that, all the Rocking Horse Girls had been defeated. Except for one. The cycle will continue, whether you like it or not. And you're going down with it. The fabric of space-time was starting to tear. The future that Garrett saw would soon become a reality. My son, you don't have to do this. Morgan Shreeman made one final attempt to reason with- Final him. man! Rocky crushed the talking tree, meaning the rocking horse made from its wood never existed. Wait. Looks like your time is up. No! That's a terrible joke! The cycle can only be broken by collecting- Okay then, I don't know how many time paradoxes and or plot holes we've just created, so comment below all the ones you counted. Garrett had to say one final goodbye to his ancestors, but these 11, all right, fine, 12 figures decided to stick together in the now completed city of 24ville. No matter what that crazy old horse said, curses were lifted, families were reunited, and everyone got adjusted to their brand new life here in the present. Sorry this insane project took so much time to complete, but thank you truly for watching, and we'll see you in 25ville.